and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another fantastic episode of Catholic Chat. And joining me here today is President John Garvey, President of the Catholic University of America. It's very nice to have you here. Nice today. to be here, Will. Yeah, well, thank you so much for doing this. And, you know, one of the things that we uh, really want to focus on today is faith journeys. Could you describe to some of the viewers out there, a lot of them who are college students and uh, high school students, what it was like for you growing up as a Catholic? Just kind of like, how did you get to where you are today, and how did your faith influence you like that? It, it was a very different and less complicated time. I, I was born after the Second World War to parents who had survived the Depression and fought in the war and wanted to nothing more than to live in a small town and raise a family and get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, the world was not as conflicted as it has become I since imagine. I was a college student. So. There wasn't so much doubt, there was much more uh, comfort and outward expression of, of being Catholic. My parents would, and my grandparents would take us to Mass every morning before school, and that was just part of the life that we lived. It's uh, very different from the world that people grow up in today, in Oregon and other places. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Now, how did your faith influence just your daily actions as, you know, someone growing up in that age and then eventually into adulthood, like how did that factor into the decisions that you made that uh, have gotten uh, you where you are today? Sometimes I'm not, uh, I'm not aware of all the influences they had. In our daily life, it was part of just the way our family lived. You know, mm -hmm. we prayed before meals, we prayed at night, we prayed in the morning, we went to church, we went to um, Catholic schools, and most of my siblings, you know, uh, maybe all of them except me, went to Catholic high schools, mm -hmm. we all went to Catholic colleges. And, but I became a lawyer, and I'm not sure that I was conscious um, in making that decision about the role that faith would play in my later life. I was thinking about the, you know, the metaphor that we were reading in Brideshead Revisited uh, in one of the later chapters, that um, the part called a twitch upon a thread. There's this uh, this metaphor you know, from a Chesterton you know, book, you know, Father Brown mystery about how God keeps keeps you on this thread and pulls out and you may not be aware of what's happening. Uh, I think it was like that with me. What's it like for you to experience all these young people, uh, many of them who are religious, uh, dedicating their lives uh, to Christ like that? What's it like just to foster that community and see it flourish like that? You know, this is a funny thing. Uh, um, people whom I talk to about teaching a class uh, to freshmen or about going to World Youth Day with students will will think, gosh, uh, isn't that great? You're setting such a good example for the students. I actually find it works the other way around. I have oh. to say that I, uh, it's been one of the great and unexpected blessings of my job that I, I am so uh, impressed in a good way, I mean affected in, in the right way by the faith that our students display in, in their uh, everyday lives. How do the Catholic values of the church influence the way you look at issues that university students face? Yeah, the job that I have now is very different from the job teaching law that I first had at the <laughs> University of Kentucky. You know, I, I might have been teaching uh, securities law in the event I was teaching civil procedure and administrative law. Today, my concerns are uh, about our faculties of theology and canon law and philosophy, about oh. teaching sacred music in the music school, yes. about the design of churches, about uh, teaching uh, about the virtues. So it's part of part of my everyday job. It also um, is part of the business of universities these days to play a role in the, uh, in the formation of the culture. And we live in a culture that could use a good injection of, of uh, Catholic intellectual life. Um, so, uh, another part of my job is uh, both resisting some kinds of incursions from the culture into the way we would prefer to do things and trying to proclaim to the culture itself uh, how we think differently and sometimes better about about immigration or about families or about health care for everybody or about science. Now you mentioned a couple of issues specifically right there that you really want you know, people to take Catholic approaches on, but if there is, you know, any general mindset or focus that you wish to see more universities taking from the Catholic ideas, uh, are there any that come to mind that uh, 
you wish that they would uh, look into? Well, there are hundreds, and, uh, <laughs> and it's a mistake to suppose that there is a, a particular Catholic uh, slant that is a kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, a sort of all-purpose tool that you're going to apply right. to solve any social or intellectual yes. or political problem. The Catholic Church is thinking about all of these matters is pretty complex, although it's very well thought out. It's a, there, there's a great uh, tradition, a great and developing tradition of Catholic thought about uh, America's immigration problems, for example. Mm -hmm. So if there was a, one piece of advice that you would give to any young people watching out there, obviously it's a very troubling time in a lot of parts of the country to be Catholic, like Oregon, where I'm from. What advice would you give out that, to them, you know, just uh, looking at their faith and you know, having them hold strong to it? I think it would be uh, that there would be two parts to it. One is say your prayers all the time. Don't mm -hmm. lose sight of why, you know, why you're a Catholic. And the other is uh, to listen to what people have to say. We have too many people who are talking in this culture and not enough mm -hmm. people who are listening to what other people have to say. We all have things to learn from everybody that we're living with. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thanks. President Garvey. Thank and you thank you very much for tuning into another episode of Catholic Chat. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.